So last month, after years of delays, Intel finally released their flagship graphics card, the A770. From the original i7-14-755 series graphics chips, as well as the uh, cancelled Larrabee project. A lot has changed since the late 90s, which uh, has ended us up with this. And we're going to be going over how I've been using this over the last month. Uh, it's actually been in the box for most of it, most of that time. I've been figuring, figuring things out, but... Uh, Yes, Intel Arc. The card comes very well presented in a Founders Edition-esque box with uh, nice foil accents and just the, the new Intel logo and everything. Funnily enough, my system is supposedly too old for this card. Intel are recommending a 10th gen CPU or Ryzen 3000 series on a 500 series board, uh, of which mine is neither, being a 2600 on a B450 board. The card is well packaged, closed cell foam and everything, with the instructions placed above and the RGB connector just underneath. The card itself is very nicely designed, smooth flowing edges and rounding corners, a nice composite backplate, which is a nice thing to see on a budget card like this. Because my motherboard is ancient, a little over four years old, that would mean I'd need to update the BIOS to get any way of rebar support, which is an important feature if you want to run ARC. This ended up being a bit of a nightmare, as trying to enable rebar with my 1070 in the system wouldn't post, and all cards before the RTX 30 series just do not support rebar and will not post with it enabled. So I had to see CMOS reset a couple times. So having removed my old 1070, done a little bit of dusting, etc, I then installed the ARC card, only for it to not detect my boot drive anymore. And we should have... and it wants to boot to Linux. I don't want to boot to Linux. But man, this card looks good. It is lit up like Pandora at night. The effects, the default RGB effects are actually really nice, and I didn't really have a reason to use the RGB cable, mainly because it would have looked ugly having a cable hanging out, but at default it just looks nice. So there it's at for two weeks, waiting to get some more components to make some necessary upgrades. Uh, this will be more obvious in a moment. Alright, I think it is time to upgrade the uh, main machine again. It has been God, almost a year, like 10-11 months, since I decided to take the last upgrade, which was in installing the cooler. So this time around we have lots of things. And, uh, oh, hold on. And uh, I've decided to do a reinstallation of Windows 10 because I did a big dum dum the first time round, and if I want to use Arc, basically required to use Rebar. And if you have one Rebar enabled, you ought to have some BIOS setting, I can't remember, but it doesn't work with uh, Masterbit Record, which is what I set this up as a few years ago, thinking, oh, I'll be doing stuff with old software and old hardware, which I never did. I decided to go NVMe and use a 970 EVO. Same capacity as the old drive, because I didn't want to spend too much on these changes, knowing that I'd upgrade more in the future, as well as a nice heatsink for it. Never had anything EK before, but this was actually pretty cheap. I also got one of those NZXT USB 2 hubs, specifically the original V1 from a few years back, mainly for the two internal USB ports, if ever I get wireless stuff. But it would also be useful if I wanted the RGB on the A770 to function, and also for adding some more ports to the front. Of which, that's what I did next. An Acacia Interconnect GX, and some cheap USB 3.1 Gen 2 card that I found on Amazon. It has support for the Gen 2 front panel connector, as well as another Gen 1 connector that the 5.25 drive can make use of. Finally, I got a 32GB kit of DDR4 at 3200 mega transfers. Didn't want to go any faster because of diminishing returns, etc. And 3200 mega transfers is sort of the sweet spot. Then it was time to install Windows. Standard procedure, turn off all the basic telemetries, and reinstall all my programs. So here we are now, in the present time. Everything has been up and running without too many issues for the last couple of weeks. The front panel connector has been pretty useful, especially with the Samsung Type-C thumb drive that I got to use with this machine and on my phone. 
As for the A770, it runs all new games as you'd expect, for performance that is around or just above a 3060. However, going back to older games that rely on DirectX 9, 10 or 11, which the card doesn't have support for, the results are varied, from slight drop in performance to missing or broken textures to straight up crashing or not being able to launch the game. This is the reason for why I vouch for having an older system, something like Burnout here, the, the 2010 gaming PC. As for the performance in generalised benchmarks, in Munizum Heaven we saw a total score of 2743, average frame rate of 108, maximum of 204 and a minimum of 9. In Unigen Superposition, we got a score of 8200, an average FPS of 61, a maximum of 78, and a minimum of 48. Mainly due to the fact that Heaven is DirectX 11 and Superposition is DirectX 12. For 3D Mark Firestrike, another DirectX 11 benchmark, we saw a score of 20668, a graphics score of 30165, physics score of 16,029, and a combined score of 7,061. Average graphics test 1, frame rate of 138, and graphics test 2 of 124, physics FPS of 50, and combined FPS of 32. And for Time Spy, the second DirectX 12 benchmark, so a score of 10,874, graphics score of 12,900, CPU score of 57,55, first graphics benchmark of 82, Second graphics benchmark frame rate of 74, and the CPU test frame rate of 19. Most likely in these situations we were held back by the aging CPU, but the performance that we gained was in line with what was essentially expected. So let's talk about the issues, and there are a few. Other than the lack of hardware DirectX 9, 10, and 11 support, it didn't have features from launch. Lots of programs don't yet support AV1 encoding, AI acceleration instructions, and the XESS upscaling. Another is that it currently doesn't have support for the Valve Index. The system will see it, but SteamVR won't, giving you the headset disconnected error. I'm still waiting for a fix, so if you're planning on getting an A770 to upgrade your VR rig, I'd wait or get a different card for now. The conclusion for this one is a little difficult. Whilst the performance and hardware specifications are impressive, especially for the price at the moment, there are too many missing features to really justify getting one. However, give it another couple months, maybe the beginning of next year, when more games come out, as really the only recent release is Modern Warfare 2, which I haven't finished yet. It came with a card, so I'm not complaining. God of War Ragnarok is unfortunately only on the PS4 and 5, so yeah. So unless you really want one of these cards, either for the fact it's Intel's first, and a piece of history at that, or you just want to experiment with it, I'd wait for the moment or get a different card. Although it's nice to see another competitor in the graphics segment. Anyway, hope you find this in any way informative. See you in the next one.